We thank you for sharing with us on this morning, all those who are home, all those who are looking at our streaming service, and to our members who are here in the sanctuary. We say God bless you, and we thank you, and we love you. We are under the great direction of the Reverend Dr. Weldon Big Williams, Jr., who is our pastor. It's okay if you give him a hand praise as well. And we thank you for sharing with us on our September 2020 Communion Sunday service. Amen. This morning's scripture can be found in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians. Chapter 4, I will read for you hearing verses 6 and 7, and this morning I will read from the contemporary English version, amen. If it is you, if you would like to stand, we invite you to stand, or who can stand, amen, as we read God's word. Word, word. And the word of the Lord reads thus, don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. For those 
who have gone into hospitals during this past week, I pray. I pray, Father God, that we will love you more. I pray, Father, that we will adore you more. I pray for our country that's going through so much turmoil. I pray for healing in the land. I pray for unity. I pray that our leaders will come together and stop the dissension between us as a people. I pray, Father God, that those who are going through bereavement, that they will be comforted this morning. I pray for each and every one of you, those who are going through bereavement, yeah. Father, that you will comfort them as only you can. I pray a blessing on everyone. I pray especially for the young children who are returning to school this week. I pray, Father, that the schools will open, that the long distance learning will still help them. I pray for my church. I pray for every member, Father, you know what they need and what they stand in need of. I pray for my pastor this morning. Prop him up on every leading side. Give him a double determination to continue. Father, I pray for every church that is open this morning. And I pray again, Father, for this troubled world. I pray for a vaccine that would bring an end to this ravaging of this pandemic. Father, I pray that this world will come together in the midst of this turmoil. I pray for my country that we as a nation will come together. I pray for the leaders of this country to see reason and come together as one. And Father, I pray that you will continue to bless us as a people. Right now, right. Continue to touch each and every soul. Father, you know what we all stand in need of. And I pray, Father, that you will deliver for each and every one. And Father, I pray that let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let us all say, Amen. Thank you.
your neighbor's amen. amen. And thank God for the deaconess and the missionary. Amen. amen. We thank God for them. Amen. Making a sacrifice. That's what it's all about. And I want to thank the singing group. Amen. Yeah. Thank our sister. Ricky, I'm getting ready for our trip. Amen. My good friend Vicky, I thank God for working with our music department. Brother Don on the organ, amen. Brother Jason on the drum. Amen. I come in here early, and the next thing I know, Brother Don is upstairs playing. Amen. And I thank God for him. I thank God for you. I thank God for just being God. Thank God for allowing us to come together one more time. God is a good God. And God is blessing us. He woke us up this morning. And somebody said, I don't know about you, but when he touched me this morning, I woke up in my right mind. I thank God for the activity of my day. Amen. And for the blood still running warm in my veins. Then as I was traveling down the road and I look around, I say it often, and I saw how beautiful the world is. I remember when my brother sung the song and said, uh, uh, what a beautiful world. God has given us a beautiful world. Amen? Amen. And we thank God for what he has given us. Thank him for the sunshine. Amen? Thank him for the good and bad. And if we were to read up where our subject is coming from, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, if you take time to read that, it tell us whatever we do, and whatever we say, amen, amen, do it in prayer. When you get up this morning, say, thank you, Lord. When you lay down tonight, we should say, thank you, Lord. We should begin the day and end in prayer. Am I right? Yes. Because let me say, I like to do it for such a day as power in prayer. Amen. If you don't know that, I can tell you from experience. I tried him, and I must say, he never let me down. And I believe what mom and daddy said, he may not be on, he may not come on, he may not come when you want him, but we learn from experience that our God what is always on time. So what I'm trying to say is praying time. If we ever needed to pray, my children, we need to pray right now. What I'm trying to say, the Christian is a person, there are many high preachers. There are many who think that the life of a Christian is completely dull. They believe that when we become a father of God, we give up every joy in his life because very humdrum and sad. But you and I that know the Lord, that is different. We know that it's good to be in the hands of God. It's good to be in the house of God. It's good to know that we are the children of God. And being in the family of God, we know that we have a God who watches over us, protects us, and keeps us safe from all hurt. In vain. Yes. We that give ourselves over to the Lord, how many sweet privileges which the unbeliever never had. We have the privilege of going to the Bible and reading God's word or God's letter to us. We have the privilege of going to the church and hear from heaven what does say the Lord. We need to hear what the Lord says in a world that has gone mad. It seems like there's trouble all around us. But when we come to church and hear the word of God, we discover that our God was in the very present help yes. in the time of trouble. Yes. We thank God for just being God. We thank God for the power of prayer. I've discovered that no matter what I'm going through, if I pray, God will bring me out on due time. I remind him of Joshua when he walked around the walls of Jericho. He prayed about it. All of us have walls in our life, yeah. but if we keep the faith and hold on to God, unchanging hand. And I'll say it again, he may not come when you want him, but we discover that our God, what? It's always on time, and the wall will come tumbling down. As we go, my friends, to the church, we have the privilege of fellowship with the best people in the world. That's you and me, ain't that right? Yeah. And it's just good to have that fellowship, one with the other. If we ever need to come together and, and as children of God, we need to come together right now. Oh, let me tell you, I need you as well as you need me, and I've discovered that without you on my side and with God on our side, 
the journey will get rough. Sometimes, my friend, the hills will get hard to climb, rivers will get deep, and, and, and trouble to grow. Wow. But we discover that when we pray, God will load the high mountain, yeah. and God will give us courage and strength as we go from day to day. Have you ever been in a situation where you found that if you didn't pray, that uh, that doors would not be open? But I discovered, if you truly pray and believe in the power of prayer, God will open doors for you that what no man can shut, and shut doors that no man can open. Let me remind you, my friend, it does not matter who's in the White House, God is on the throne. I discovered, my friend, no matter what this person say or what this person do, if I go to God in prayer, I know if I wait on him, my God will make a way out of no way. Our God, my friend, no matter how modern we are, no matter what we're going through, God is still on the throne. And let me tell you, if you don't know it, God is on the main line. Pray, just tell him what you want. Do you feel like sometimes the burden gets heavy? Do you feel like you want to give up sometimes? Do you feel like you want to close your Bible and your hymn books and study war no more? Yes. But if you pray right and live right, God will inspire you and, and give you courage. Your old folks say to run on and see what the end will be. Yes, yes. That's why every time I get a chance, I talk to God in prayer. When you talk to God, God will talk to you. That's what prayer is all about. You talking to God and God is talking to you. When I got up this morning, I said, thank you, Lord. Hey, Amen. When I lay down, I, I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And when he came by and touched me this morning, I said, thank you, Lord. Let me tell you, if we ever needed prayer, we need it right now. Right now. This is a mean world that we live in, huh? And let me tell you, my friend, Satan is mighty, but God is all mighty. Whatever we're going through, my friend, if you trust God and pray right, but let me tell you, you can't pray right unless you live right. God won't hear a sinner's prayer. But yeah. when you get right on the inside and get right with God, God will answer your prayer. Yeah. Let me remind you, and I'll say it again, there's power in prayer. Yeah. No matter what we're going through, and let me tell you, even though we, we in the church, the devil comes in every now and then to disrupt our program. He'll tell you not to do this and not to do that. But let me tell you, my friend, you be obedient to God and do what God does say, and God will answer your prayer. Yes, yes, There's yes. power in prayer. I know from experience, my friend, that there is power in prayer. I know that if I trust him and, and look to him, I believe he sits high and he looks low. I believe that he has what? Not part of the world, but my God has what? The whole world in the palm of his hand. That's why we need to pray, and we need to pray more. Don't wait till you come to the house of God to pray. You can pray in your home. That's why our homes are tall with confusion. Yes. That's why there's trouble in our tools. That's why we got trouble in our justice system. You know why? Because we don't pray like we ought to pray. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, if you ever need prayer, we need it right now. Yes. There's power in prayer. Have you ever doors for you? Have you ever gone through life and doors were shut in your face, but you prayed to God and God opened doors for you? Yeah. I believe, my friend, if you trust Him and believe in Him, He'll open doors for you that no man can shut. Yes. And then not only that, we discover that He'll shut doors that no man can open. Why? Because we believe in the power of prayer. Yeah. Let me tell you, you got to learn, my friend, to trust in God. Oh, and you got to learn to look to the hill from which coming what? My help, because what? All of my help coming from the Lord. The devil's job is to block our hearing, but we don't see here the word of God. That's yeah. Satan's job. Let me also remind you, that's why we ought to always pray. Every time you see prayer, is us talking to God. When you talk to God, God will talk back to you. I used to look at folks when they get in the automobile, and I used to think they only their cell phone, but I discovered that everybody's not on their cell phone. They're talking and conversing with God. Amen. I do that when I get in my car and say, Lord, I don't know what's down the road, but I'm talking to you, Lord. Guide me, protect me, and make a way for me. Are you praying with me now? We ought to 
always remember my friend that I've gone to this God. Not the prayer talk about knowing that our God will answer our prayer. I know what he can do. And I know that he not I know that he's a battle act for the time of battle. We're always going through battle. We're always uh, going through this and that. But God is on the main line. All we got to do is trust them and, 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 and wait on him. And God will make a way out of nowhere. Are you praying for me now? That's why every time you get a chance, go to the Philippians 6, 4, and 6, 4, 6 and 7. And the scripture said, we ought to always pray for the Lord. What I mean by that, don't just wait till trouble knocks at your door before you even pray. Pray when you get up. Pray like you talk uh, to your husband, your wife, or your girlfriend. Pray like that when you talk to God. Lord, how are you doing today? Yeah. Lord, how, that's what we need to do that. We need to talk to God like he's right by our side. He did. He said he bring us always, but out till the end of time. God is a good God. We ought to talk to him, my friend, every morning. Even in, and even when our good times and bad times. Don't just wait to come and knock at your door to pray to God. Pray when things are going well. And pray when things are going uh, going bad. Yeah. You know what? If you pray to God all the time, when trouble comes in your life, you know what to say because you've been in communication with the Father. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's why I say I like the child's prayer. Lord, lay me if I say, Lord, lay me down to sleep tonight. That's a child's prayer. Yeah. And He said, if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord what for my soul to take. Let me tell you, my friend, when you're wrapped up in God, he'll be there by your side. Yeah. But you got to live right, you got to do right, and God will answer your prayer. Don't you think that God's going to answer your prayer if you're not living in being obedient to the word of God? Well, uh, and my God? But when you get right, see, one thing about God, when you get right and ask God for forgiveness, he will answer your prayer. I know that. Yeah. And I know that on this Christian journey, it's not an easy journey. We, we got problems. You got problems in church. People in the church don't know who they follow. They think they follow the deacon, they think they follow the trustee. But let me tell you, let me tell you, you're not following nobody but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Am I right? When you follow him, don't let you people come to tell you that who you should follow or not follow. Huh? Follow who God has placed you to follow. Am I right? I, I discover, my friend, I discover if God is for you, huh? Who in the world can be against you? Do you believe that? Yeah. yeah. Who can be against you? No matter how many is out there that's against you, if you got God, you got the best friend on Amen. your side. Amen. That's why we can sing with a friend. Jesus is the best friend that you and I can ever have. Yeah. That's why David, uh, 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 the, uh, the songwriter David said, or uh, the writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. All our sins, what? Increase the bad. What a privilege just to carry. What a piece of privilege. Just to carry everything to God. No matter what I'm going through, big or small, I can go to God because He holds the whole world yeah. in the palm of His hand. Yeah. No matter if I go north, east, west, or south, God is there. Yeah. That's why we serve a God that is everywhere. He's the same God in Alabama, same God in Georgia, same God in South Carolina. Our God is everywhere. Meaning that no matter where we are, no matter where we go, God will hear. Our prayer. The only thing that we got to be is but obedient to the word of God and God will answer your prayer. Yeah. We got problems, my friend. Not only we got problems uh, in the world, you got problems right in the church. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. God is trying to tell us something. God is trying to tell us, get your house in order, church, Amen. so we can get right and go home. Get your house in order, church, get right so we can get home. Everybody that say Lord and Lord is not gonna go, go into the kingdom. Only those who have been washed in the blood of the land, those who have committed their sins to God and asked for forgiveness. Yeah. God will forgive you. Yeah. If you pray right and live right, no matter what you're going through, God's grace is sufficient. Yeah, is. What does God's grace mean? No matter what you're going through, it's great. Uh, well, if you believe, God will remove your sin if you just believe. What can wash away my sin? Can the Reverend do it? No. What can wash away my sin? Can the President do it? No. What can wash away my sin? Only the blood of Jesus what can 
wash away my sin. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. If you pray right and live right, God will remove that sin out of the way if you believe. Uh, I always say that no detergent in the world can remove your sin. I don't care what you do, if you run into the shower and take a shower and think you're going to be clean, you ain't clean. It's not what's done on the outside, but what's done on the inside. Am I right? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The church, we got a problem. You got church preachers, members competing against the other. Yes, the only yes. person I'm going to compete against is the devil. And I know with God on my side, I shall what? Overcome. Yes. Let me tell you, my friend, David was a, a, a man after God's own heart. You remember that? Yes. Y'all remember that story? David was a man after God's own heart. But even though he was a man after God's own heart, he still committed sin. Yes. You know the sin he committed? He committed sin. And, and, but let me tell you, when David committed sin, he, he, he did not feel the joy of his salvation. He came to church, he didn't feel nothing. You ever see people that come to church, oh, I, I, I didn't enjoy the church. And ain't nothing wrong with the church. Ain't nothing wrong with the preacher. Ain't wrong with the, with the news department. It's you. It's you, my friend. So when David came to church, he could not feel the spirit of God. And that happens with a lot of us. We come, we come in the same old way, and you leave the same old way because you're not right with God. Amen. David realized that he was not right. He didn't feel nothing when he came into the house of God. Have you ever felt like that? That thing that when you came to the church, they come home and say, the choir didn't sing right. The pastor didn't preach right. What the heck? It ain't, it ain't the pastor, it ain't the, it ain't the choir, it's you. Amen. It's me, oh Lord, what's standing? It's me, oh Lord, standing. It's me, oh Lord, what's standing in the need of prayer. Yes, yes. So David, let me tell you, David, when, he, when he, he, he went to God and asked for forgiveness, he asked the Lord to restore unto him the joy of his salvation. So that when he came to church, instead of being a critic, uh, he a real soldier. You, we got too many critics. In the church, we got too many people who take power uh, as their gift and not God's gift. Mm -hmm. I thank God for praise doctrine. I thank God for giving me you. I thank God for just being a mighty good God. So when I come to the church, I feel good because I'm wrapped up in my, the bosom of the Lord. I feel His presence every time I come to the house of God. I can feel Him on the inside. Ain't God wonderful? Ain't God good? Has God been good to you? Yeah. Has God answered your prayer? Yeah. Stop being ashamed to let people know that 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 you in the house of the Lord. Stop waiting till something happens for you to come to the church and pray. Stop being a critic, right? And start and start being a believer. You can't be a believer if you're always a critic. You ever know people in the church? I know no matter what they say, they just can't see. What the Lord has done for them. Woke them up this morning. Yes. I a lot of people don't see that. Sit down to eat. I have food to eat. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Hey, they, 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 they not only that, but I chose to put on my back. God, he's a good God. You know what I come about? If I pray right and live right, God would answer our prayer. We got to be like David when David realized that he couldn't feel nothing when he came into the house of the Lord. And we, and, and we got people like that. They've been coming for years and years. They don't feel nothing because they don't talk to God. Yeah. Yeah, you got to talk to God like you talk to your husband, you talk to your wife, like you talk to your boyfriend, to your girl. If you don't have no communication, what? You, drunk, you, you begin to pull away. But every time I get a chance, I want to talk about God. And not only do I want to talk about him to myself, but I want to talk to others and let the others know that my God is a mighty good God and my God must still answer in prayer. Yeah. What do you know? Why do you say that God answers in prayer? Did you wake up this morning yet? Yeah. Yeah. Did he feed you? Did he put clothes on your back? Yeah. Did even the job, you know, many of us go to the hospitals and, and our bodies get, you know, our bodies come. We're only here for so long. We are here for a bit. Don't, don't people say, well, it's a shame that so and so did. We all do that. We all gonna die. If Jesus tarry, listen to what I say. If Jesus tarry, all of us will go to the experience called death. Yeah. If Jesus tarry. What do you mean by that, Pastor? 
That means that Jesus don't come back in our lifetime. All of us will go to experience God death. But you know what? Let death come. Because that is the beginning, if you're in the Lord, that God has something wonderful for you. Yeah. Oh, the, the word that I have not seen, yeah. ears have not heard. No, we can conceive in our mind what God has in store in store for us. Ain't that wonderful? And then the word of God said, no matter what we're going through, the word of God said that man that is born of a woman is here but for a few days. And one thing, and life is full of trouble. So we go through. I got a headache like you got a I take time to all like you take y'all. I do, I take it. Because it's because it's just, just because sometimes the journey gets rough. Yeah. And I get discouraged sometimes, many times. I don't feel like coming down to the house of God because I don't need Satan on the outside, I need him on the inside. And, it's, and the devil will come in and try to rob you of your joy. Yes. That's his job, is to kill our joy. But what God gave me, nobody can take it away. My God is good. Yes, is. I just want to tell you, my friend, there's power in the word of God. Yes. There's power. All you do is got to believe. Take him by the hand. And like David said, even though I walk through the valley, what of the shadow of death? David said I will fail. Not, not what this person said. But David said, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David said, what? I will fear no evil wife because thou art with me. That's what prayer is all about. Prayer is talking with God, being in communication with God. Like I tell you, folks, don't let people steal your joy. Be, be like David, you feel low. Get on your knees and talk to God in prayer. But I want to tell you before I close, there is power in prayer. If you don't believe me, go to the Bible. And you'll see how Moses was on his way to the promised land. Look what it said. Moses was on his way to the promised land. What I'm saying, I'm on my, you and me are on our way, huh? Mm -hmm. To the promised land. And while we're on the journey, Dad, come up to there, show down, but keep your eyes on God. When, 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 when Moses realized that there were high mountains on the left and the mountain, the high mountains on the right again. When he realized that there was a red sea before him and Pharaoh's army behind him, what did he do? My friend, he was looking sometimes the people of God will make you try to lose your, 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 your power, your strength. But Moses, they got, they got upset. But what did Moses do? He talked to God and told God what all about. What did God say to Moses? The route of your delivery, what? Is in your own hand. What I've learned by that, whatever we're going through, if we just trust God, my friend, he'll make a way. There may be mountains on the right and mountains on the left of God, but if you believe in prayer, God will open the high mountain. Am I right? And how many times I say that he's our bridge work over troubled water if you just believe. If you don't believe in my friend, my friend, just look at the three Hebrew boys. You remember them, my friend? They would not bow down to the idol God. The trouble with us, we bow down to everybody else, but we don't bow down to God. We, our, our eyes are closed, our ears are closed. We don't hear the voice of God saying, Come unto me, what? All ye that lay are heavy day, and he will do it. He will give us rest. Do you know, my friend, there's power in prayer. Yeah. You remember what the three Hebrew boys? My friend Satan was trying to make us look at things, and it looks good, but let me tell you, everything that looks good ain't good. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Have you ever been with people that look good on the outside? But believe me, there's another person on the inside. But let me tell you, I pray to God. Whatever you do, pray to God. Yes. Whatever decision you're going to make, pray to God. Because there's power in power. Power, power my friend, let us know. If you believe and trust God, he still yes. is bread in the starving land. Yes. And it's still water in dry places. Yes. If you just trust God. Oh, my friend, oh, my friend, oh, my friend, oh, my friend. Oh, my friend, oh, my friend, oh, my friend. Whatever you're going to, you just trust God and believe in the power of prayer. You remember, you remember, Paul and Simon, how they were thrown into the Philippian jail. Even though they were cast among thieves and robbers, but they didn't give up, they didn't give up. They looked to the hills and realized, I heard them saying, what a fellowship, what a fellowship, what a fellowship, what a joy in the mind. They believe it, they say, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Am I right about it? Oh, my friend, oh, my friend, oh, my friend. There's a mean world that we're living in, but my God is still on the throne. My God can't.
defend and God can destroy. Oh, you do the God say, Lord, 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 I stretch my hand to be in the world to help. I know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Why don't you say thank you? Why don't you say thank you, Lord? Why don't you raise your hand?
room where communion is all about? He shed blood on Calvary. He didn't have to come when he came because he loved you and I. And no nails could hold him to the cross. He could have came down. And he died and he was So let us keep in mind that power of us. We're going to have to have a minister home to talk over our friend of mine. We know that Jesus Christ was awesome and he was always giving directives to his disciples. And in the upper room, as they had come together to partake of the Last Supper, he broke the bread that would represent his body. And he said, this represents my body, which he brings to me. And then he poured the wine which would represent his shed blood. We do know that without his blood being shed, there is no remission of sins. No remission of sins. And the blood also represented the New Testament, the new covenant, that new contract. No more was the law what the people had to live up to, but now it was the blood of Jesus. Amen. Take your bread in your hand.
prayer. So let us continue the month of September with prayer. And to all of those who have a birthday, happy birthday to all of our September birthdays. And this is a special announcement uh, that our Sunday school hour will go back to 9.30 p.m. Please pass the word. Thank you. These are your announcements. Amen. Here's the announcement. You have to govern yourself accordingly. And again, like she said, remember I sit and shut in. Pray for one another. Amen. These are bad times, but God still lives. And all we do is just keep on praying. And let me tell you, He has power in prayer. Let us stand.